friends. Welcome back to Mastectomy 101. Thank you to all those who've been supporting me thus far. And I hope to be able to bring you information that will help you through your, through your journey through breast cancer, whether you are undergoing a mastectomy or not. So the topics that we'll be covering will be helpful to you in navigating your journey. So again, I'm gonna ask you to visit my website www.sisters, the number four, prevention.com. There you'll find the latest information on the breast cancer vaccine and also what I've been up to and links to my podcast and also to my latest YouTube video postings. And as always, please hit that like and subscribe button. That helps us out so much and we really appreciate it. So don't leave without doing that. So, if our immune system is so great, why do we get cancer? We've been learning a lot about the immune system the last two years with COVID. And you've probably heard a lot about how the vaccines are produced to, to sort of program the immune system to look for a certain spike protein on the virus. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and explain how cancer gets away with invading our bodies without alerting the immune system that, hey, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be growing. I'm not supposed to be uh, invading other cells using your blood supply. So here. So I'll talk about my little diagram I have up on the left at the end of our talk. So basically, our immune system is designed to be the cleanup crew, which constantly surveys for foreign invaders such as bacteria and viruses. These harmful sub substances are called antigens. Our immune system surveillance team identifies these invaders, marks them, and then calls out the cavalry known as the T-cells, to destroy them. We then have these special cells called macrophages. And what they are, are large white blood cells that are an important part of our immune response. The word macrophage literally means big eater. Its job is to clean our bodies of microscopic debris and microscopic debris and invaders. My braces, sorry. A macrophage is an amoeba-like cell that patrols our bodies and eats intruders. What macrophages can do is pull apart enemy cell proteins and present and identify them to the T cells as invaders. So they basically look at the cell, they see something on the cell, think of like the spike protein of the coronavirus. They see what it looks like, they pull that protein off and they show it to the immune T cells and say, hey, here's your bad guy. That's pretty oversimplifying it, but so that's what it's going to do. But let's talk a little bit more about that. So what exactly are T cells? So T cells are cells produced in the bone marrow and they spend some time maturing and developing in an organ in the chest called the thymus. That's why they're labeled T cells. T cells actually stands for thymus cells. Once they are mature, the T cells are released into the blood and lymph nodes to start their work. When a T cell is presented an invader by the macrophage, the macrophage finds what's, what's the enemy by identifying it. It will then call out the cavalry we call antibodies to eliminate the diseased cell or invader. Specific types of T cells have many functions. Specific types of T cells are called helper cells which activate the other cells of the immune system and killer cells which are called cytoxic T cells. They are the ones that actually eliminate the foreign body.
Now, how cancer evades the immune system has puzzled scientists for decades. When the cells are or become abnormal, macrophages, by their design, are supposed to consume and destroy them. So how can these diseased and abnormal cells evade this important checkpoint designed to keep us healthy? How is cancer, the enemy, allowed to fly under the radar of our immune system? Well, to put it in simple terms, cancer cells somehow send out a do not eat me signal to the macrophages. And they do this by expressing pro certain proteins on their cell surfaces, therefore disguising themselves and tricking the macrophages. These surface proteins expressed by the cancer cell actually bond to other proteins on the surface of the macrophage, paralyzing their ability to destroy or consume the cancer. The result is they were never presented to the T cells for an immune response. Since the immune system does not identify the cancer cell as an enemy, it does not generate an immune response and allows other cells like it to continue undetected. So if cancer cells can evade our brilliant immune system somehow, how can chemotherapy identify and kill cancer cells? Well, the honest answer is it can't. Chemotherapy works simply by killing cells that are identified as rapidly dividing. Cancer cells need lots of glucose or sugar for their energy to divide. Every cell in your body uses blood sugar or glucose for energy, but a cancer cell needs about 200 times more than normal to divide. Chemotherapy is often administered in a glucose solution to entice the cancer cells to absorb the treatment. <coughs> Excuse me. Since cancer cells are hungrier and more aggressive, they eat the chemo, which is the first objective of the treatment. The problem is that as well as killing cancer cells, chemotherapy also kills cells that are rapidly dividing, like in your mouth, stomach, and in your bowel or gut. Also in your skin, hair, and bone marrow. Damage to these normal cells cause the effects of chemotherapy. However, unlike cancer cells, normal cells are able to repair the damage and can recover. So that's why we lose hair when we are undergoing chemotherapy. And you often hear of uh, mouth sores, which is why they will often ask you to suck on ice while you're receiving chemo, because it basically freezes the cells in your mouth. So you won't get um, blisters or the side effects. You've probably also heard of women who will use the, um, the chemo cap, which is an ice cap that is placed on their head, and it basically puts your hair follicles to sleep and freezes them so that the chemo doesn't reach your hair follicles and therefore will, you won't lose your hair. So there's a lot of sort of controversy about that, whether or not, well, suppose I have this cap on my head and possibly some cells have gotten to my brain. Is that going to be affected by the, um, the, 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 uh, the ice cap on my head? But there's a lot more that needs to be looked into about that. And I really don't know the answer to that. I'm just throwing that out there for you guys to think about. So what I've just told you is a complete simplification of the immune system. So if you look over there at my little diagram over there, my little cartoon, it shows you that, I gotta put my glasses on for this one. 
So how does the immunotherapy work? Well, if you look at my little cartoon, it says tumor cells bind to T cells for deactivating them. So there you see it's binding to the uh, macrophage and the T cells, and immunotherapy drugs block tumor cells from deactivating the T cells. You probably heard of um, some blockers that are being used now to, um, to make sure that the cancer cannot um, evade the immune system. So that's my simplification. I'm going to now just read you uh, a PhD interpretation of how this works by my good friend Dr. Tui. And um, of course his is 100% accurate. Mine is just a teacher's version to give you an idea of how this all works. So here's what Dr. Tui says. The immune system is designed to distinguish between normal cells or our self cells, in other words, our own cells, and invaders like bacteria and viruses, which he calls non-self. This distinction is made by our immune system's ability to detect distinct evolutionary conserved structures on pathogens called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs for short. There are dozens of these PAMPs in pathogens, including specific DNA motifs found only in bacteria and double-stranded RNA found only in viruses. When these are recognized by a large cohort of pattern recognition receptors, called in the PhD world PRRs, then these uh, then when, okay, excuse me, let me start again, let me start again. When these PMPs are recognized by a large cohort of padded recognition receptors, known as PRRs, found on many of the different immune cells, they activate what immunologists call a danger signal that activates the immune system to attack and destroy the invading bacteria. Or virus. Breast cancers are very much like normal cells and breast tissues because they don't express these PAMPs and therefore are not recognized no, not. by the immune system as danger. Thus, breast cancers and normal breast tissues are not normally capable of being recognized and attacked by the immune system. Cancer cells show unrestricted cell division and unobstructed growth. Thus, treatments such as chemotherapies are designed to interfere with the mitotic apparatus, that's how the cell divides, of cancer cells and inhibit their ability to divide, therefore inhibiting the growth of the cancer. However, such chemotherapies also inhibit normal rapidly dividing cells in the gastrointestinal tract and in the bone marrow. And this bone marrow that generates immune cells thereby creates a common side effect like diarrhea and immunosuppression respectively. And also we saw about the sign of hair loss. So I hope this helped you understand how this horrible devious disease is allowed to evade the immune system. And before we go again, I'm gonna ask you again, please hit that subscribe and like button. It does help us tremendously to get more viewers and to get our word out. And please visit my website, www.sisters4prevention.com. There you can read my blogs about prevention strategies. You can see the latest on the breast cancer vaccine and just learn what's going on in the breast cancer community. I also have a podcast, and the link to that is also on my website. So thank you for joining me. Till next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, God bless.
Thank you.